Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. One of our Discord members recently asked about how to achieve a stutter effect on audio. Several people mentioned plugins such as Fracture by Glitch Machines to achieve this effect, and that works well, but there's also ways built into Reaper that will help you to achieve the same effect. Today we'll be taking a look at automation items in Reaper to achieve this effect. Let's take a look. The project I've got open is just a simple drum beat using Steven Slate drums and some noise that I made with Vital Synth. Let's take a listen to it in its current form. So as you can hear, we've just got a standard disco type beat and some random noise using Vital. Now what if we wanted to add a little bit of a stutter effect to this? The first thought that comes to my mind is we can automate the mute function on that track to give it a bit of a controlled stutter. To do that, first we'll need to bring up an automation lane for the mute function. There's a few different ways that we can do this. This button labeled Trim that's to the right of my Effects button is actually used for showing and hiding automation envelopes. I'll click this button. And this brings up a listing of every envelope, envelope, or however you say it, that's available for this particular track. The amount of envelopes that are available will differ depending on the plugin that's currently on the track. In this case, I want to use something that's actually a part of the track itself and not from Vital. So I'll select the mute envelope. You can see here that it's now visible and armed. So we can close this dialog, and we can see that the mute envelope is there. Let's take a look at another way to activate that envelope or envelope. I'll probably say it both ways throughout the video. It doesn't matter. Let's go to the actions list and do a search for mute envelope. Here we have an action to toggle track mute envelope visible. If I run that action now, you can see that my mute envelope has disappeared. I don't currently have a keyboard press tied to that, but you can add one if you'd like. I'll run this again to make my envelope visible and close the actions list. I think what I'd like to do is to create maybe a 16th note stutter effect on beats three and four of the second measure. I'll zoom in a bit so we can see our time. And here's our second measure, beats three and four. I'll need to create an automation item there. Now you can write automation directly to this line, but the nice thing about automation items is that they can be reused by copying and pasting, or they can be pooled so that you can have multiple copies of the same envelope that are all controlled and changed by the parent. To create my automation item, I'm going to set my cursor at the beginning of beat 3 on measure 2, hold Alt on the keyboard, and you can see that my cursor has changed. Now I can draw my automation item by holding Alt and left-clicking and dragging to take up the amount of time that I'd like. That should cover beats 3 and 4 of measure 2. Now currently this envelope does nothing. Its default state is unmuted, so if I play back the song, it does the same thing it did before. To achieve the effect that we'd like, I'll double click the automation envelope, and this brings up the automation item properties. Currently it's set for LFO shape none. LFO stands for low frequency oscillator, and I'd like to change this to a square wave. By changing this to a square wave, we now have an on and off state in this automation envelope. Let's take a listen. We're currently set to one cycle, and one cycle of a square wave will simply be a toggle between on and off. I'd like 16th notes, so with a little bit of math, I believe that if I set this to 8, that should give us the states that we'd like. Let's take a listen. That sounds pretty good, but I think I'd like it to go even faster. Let's try 16. There, I like that better than 8. That sounds pretty good. I think I'd like to do the same thing at the end of the song as well, so I can hold down control on the keyboard and left click and drag to create a copy of that automation item. Let's take a listen with that automation item at the end. That sounds pretty cool, but what if I wanted to change this back to eight? I can click on my first mute automation item and change this back to eight. And this one has changed, but the copy has not. Let's delete the second copy. And I'd like to copy this one again, but instead of holding Control, I'll hold Control alt You can see from the dialog on the screen that that will do a copy and pool automation item. So when I left click and drag, this automation item has one mute, as does this parent, one mute. This means that they are both tied together, so if I make a change on the second one here to 16, the first one follows. And by that same token, if I change the first one, the second one follows. This makes it really easy for you to repeat an effect or an automation at different points in the song. Let's set that back to 16 because I definitely like the way that sounds better. Let's take a listen.
You can copy automation items along the same lane, but you can also copy them to other lanes. For example, if I wanted to create a pan envelope on this same track, I can go back to my trim button, add the pan envelope, and currently it's just set for center, which is fine. Now I can take the automation envelope for mute, hold control and copy it, and I can copy it up to the second lane. Now it has the same structure that we had here and it's not pooled, but it now affects pan. Let's take a listen. With that rapid panning, it actually gave us the same type of stutter effect. Let's open up the properties for this pan envelope and change it from a square wave to a sine wave and also reduce the cycles to four. Now that we've got a sine wave instead of a square wave, we can see that this is moving from left to right. Let's take a listen. If we wanted to copy that pan envelope, we can hold down control to copy an unpooled version and we can change this one, alter the phase, alter the amp skew, and change whatever parameters that we'd like. And of course, if we wanted to make a pooled copy of either of these, we can hold Control Alt, then left click and drag. So as you can see, automation items can be very useful for making glitch effects or just controlling parameters that you'd like to reuse on a track. I hope this helps. If you enjoy the content you've been seeing, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And you can support the channel further by clicking the Buy Me A Coffee or Patreon link below. I like coffee. Check the link in the description to join us on Discord. Uh, probably should turn off the camera.